Let's solve this question. We are talking here about 65 education systems. Now, students in all 65 of these systems, they took a global exam. That global exam was in reading, science and mathematics. Now, on the scatter plot that is given here to you, each of the 65 data points displays average mathematics score, average math score, which is your M, and average reading score are both rounded to the nearest integer for one of the education systems. What does this mean? Well, 65 education systems and then 65 data points, which means here on the scatter plot, all of these dots that I have, if I count them, I will find that these are 65 dots because each dot represents one of the education systems. Now, what is it that we are reading for each dot for each education system? We are reading two things, the average math score, which you can see here on the x-axis, mathematics M, and the average reading score R that you can see here on the y-axis label. So let's just take one example to see how we're reading this. Say I randomly take this one. Now, when I try to read this, I will read the mathematics average score here. So you see it's very close to 480, maybe a 481 or 82. Similarly, if I try to read the corresponding average reading score, this is just slightly above the 460 mark. So again, it could be 462, 464, something. It's a 20 that I have as my unit interval gap. Now, for questions such as these where reading exact values is difficult, they would never even ask you for exact values. So don't worry about that. Now, one more important thing here was that these values that are given to us, these are rounded to the nearest integer. What that means is that if suppose this value is 481, then that's not the actual average mathematics score. That could be. But what it really means is that the actual score is in the range 480.5 and less than 481.5. That's how when you round it to the nearest integer, it becomes 481. So all of these values here should not make you think that the score itself was an integer every time. The average score, though, when you rounded it off to the nearest integer, then it became an integer and then it is represented here on the scatter plot. Okay, let's read further, the last part says something about the line that we see. It says the line represent all points where M and R are equal. Okay, so if I look at this line, I can see that it starts here at 360, 360. Then I can see it goes up till 620, 620. Yes, and any other point also, if I try to read on this, this is where I have 580 for X value, 580 for Y value. Okay. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition, and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Now that we've understood everything that's given to us, it's a relatively simple data set. Let's just see what is asked. So here we come and it says, based on all the information that was given, you select from the drop down menu the option that makes sense. Now, there are two statements that we will solve here. Let's only focus on the first one first. Here we go. Let's read. It says the percent of the 65 education systems, well, that's all of the education systems, the percent of these for which the value of M exceeds the value of R is between dash and dash percent. And I see it's a it's an interval of 25% every time, so I don't have to be very exact, which is the feeling we got when we first read the data as well. So first of all, what do I want? Percent of 65 systems for which something is happening here. The value of M exceeds the value of R. Now understand here the representation that we had. We had M on the x-axis, R on the y-axis. We also had this line where M was equal to R. Now where is it that M will exceed R? That is M is greater than R. Where do I see that? I know the equal part, but where is it greater? Well, it's very easy. Look at the chart here. Say I take a random example. Say this is a point which is 400, 400. So 400 on both the axis this way. Now, if I take a point above this line, anywhere above this line, understand that if I'm taking it directly, you know, vertically above 400, 400, then the X value I have not changed. It's still 400. But this time, the Y value that I have is definitely more than 400. Similarly, you could go even higher up. Obviously, your Y would just keep increasing. Even if you go just slightly above this, you know, right here, if you go vertically above, even then the Y value will be more than 400.
Now, this is just one example I took to take up, you know, reference and see what's happening as you go above. You can think about any other point as well. Say, you know, this is 800, 800. Now also, if I go vertically above this one somewhere here, then the X value still stays at 800, but the Y value is definitely more than 800. Now, my X value is M, my Y value is R. So what I'm seeing is that every time that I go above this line, I have my M less than R because M is the value I'm getting really from the line and the R value is increasing because really I have gained more height than I have moved to the right. X and Y axis, what are the things they show? X axis is about how much on the right you are. Y axis is about how high you're going. So from the M equal to R where you were as much to the right as you were high, now you're going higher than you're going to the right. Similarly, you can just take examples for this region below the line and you will be able to show that this is where M is greater than R, which is what we wanted here. So essentially, we want to see what percent of the 65 systems, the 65 dots that we will have, what percentage of those are in this region. What percent, let me just put it this way, what percent of the 65 dots are below the line? That is where I have M greater than R as I want. So we'll just go to the scatter plot and count how many points are below this line. Let's just go and try to find that. Here we are. So all of the points below, right? You need all of these here and count them. When you would count them, you would find them to be 26 points. And if I want to find a percentage that these form out of 65, it's going to be 25 out of 65 times 100. They are both divisible by 13 and I get a neat 40%. Now, therefore, where does 40% lie in the range? Well, it's surely between 25 and 50. And that's it. Part one is done. Now let's look at statement two. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. Thus, Throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Here, this says value of R exceeds the value of M by the greatest amount for the education system. So we're talking about a specific education system for which R exceeds M by the greatest amount for this education system for which the value of R is in the interval this. So basically, there are two, three things we have to do. First of all, we have to understand where is it that R exceeds M. Then we have to see where is it that it exceeds, yes, but by the greatest amount. Then once we find this particular education system, then for this system, you need to find R. That's all we have to do. Now, we already spent effort in trying to see where R is greater than M, where M is greater than R. We'll just quickly bring that back here. So we had M equal to R here. And since M was on the X axis, this is where M is greater than R. And this region above is where M is less than R. So this time I'm talking about M being less, which is this part above the line. So remember how in part one, we had worked with everything below, but now we are in a different region. But in part one, we did not really bother about the greatest amount of a difference or the least amount. All we saw there was, where is it that, you know, R is greater or M is greater. This time we have to go a step further and see where in this region now will R exceed M by the greatest amount. Again, it's a very simple observation. So just think about again from a starting point. I am again starting from 400, 400. And notice two points that I take vertically above it. What do you understand about both of them? Well, both of them will obviously have the same x value as this 400. So m is equal to 400 for both of these. But what can you say about the y value? What about this r here? That is definitely increasing as I go above, which means from the stage where both of them are equal, here I came to a stage where my r has increased more than 400. Here then, I came to a, a stage where r has increased further. So the gap between r and m is widening as I am going above this point. So as I'm going farther away from the line, vertically above, that is how this difference between r and m is increasing. Yes, R is exceeding M in all of these places. Now that I want to know about the greatest difference that's going to be there, I know that I am looking for the highest point vertically above 
this line. So I'm really seeing it vertically like this. So vertically above the line, we will identify this point. This point, once we identify, it will be the education system that we are interested in. Then we'll simply go and read R. So let's bring that. Perfect. So here I brought everything together. You can see the scatter plot and you can see what we are looking for. Simply, let's find the highest point vertically above the line. So first of all, above the line is what I'm interested in. I am not going to look at anything here below. Now for the vertical vertical part. So look at these points one by one. You can actually visually see it if you just observe it carefully that see if this gap is even less than one unit on the y-axis. These are also really, really close. These are all so, so close. There is this one point that I see, which is at a sizable distance. Why? Because I see one complete unit on the y-axis and then half or more. It's about one and a half units away from the line vertically by the y-axis. Everywhere else, if you try to see that, it's just not that much. It's not one and a half. This one then is the point which is the farthest away vertically from the line and therefore this is the system that we were interested in. And what do we want for this particular system? We want the value of R. And be careful as you're reading this, R is on the y-axis. So you simply want to come here and this is where your value will be. Now I said you will never have to be too exact because I don't know what this is. They're not even asking for that. Just look at the choices. The choices are like this. So I just need a 20 gap. You see the interval is with a spread of 20 and we can definitely be confident that it is something between 440 and 460 and therefore I come here and mark choice C. That therefore is my correct answer. Now, As you're doing this be very careful you don't accidentally read the mathematics value because if you read M it'll be 400 to 420 and that is also a choice. So you lose your focus and you definitely will have a choice to mark. So be careful. We're done. Let's now summarize this. So we began by completely understanding this data set. We read the information and understood it in conjunction with the scatter plot. What are these 65 points? What do they represent? Initially, we only understood about this line that was given to us where M is equal to R. But then when we went into our questions one by one, the first one talked about where M is greater than R. And for this, we did this entire analysis to see where is it that M exceeds R? Where is it that it's less than R? We could clearly find this by taking simple examples. So we used the power of visualization here. Then using this, we could translate this question into very simple terms using something as simple as below the line, above the line. After that, all we had to do was go to the scatter plot and count. That's it. Then when we came to the second one, it again talked about one of them exceeding the other. This time we were in a different region, but it went beyond just where something exceeds. It went to where does it exceed by the greatest amount. And this again, we interpreted that this is talking about the highest point vertically above the line. And once we identified that point easily by going on to the scatter plot, we just had to read its corresponding R value. This part shows how easy work can get once you have a solid approach before you jump into your data. Otherwise, it's 65 data points. It can confuse you. So both of these parts here show that we should always be sure about what we're going to do first, determine our approach after owning the data set, of course, and then go back to find what we need.